Hello everyone, in this video we will have an introduction to static and dynamic force analysis. Now before we talk about the force analysis, the types of force analysis, we need to know why do we need equilibrium in a system and why do we need force analysis in a system. So by equilibrium we mean state of balance. So whenever we are designing a machine, let's assume this rectangular block is showing a machine and it is on a, this is a support which is fixed. This is the input, right? The, the function of machinery is what you give some input and you get some output, right? So here we are getting the output. Now from input to output, there are n number of links and n number of mechanisms that are working in a machine or in a system. So we need to find out the magnitude and direction of forces that are acting in order to select the sizes of the components in order to find out what all assumptions we are making. Because when we are selecting the size of the components, we have to ensure that size is good enough that it do not fail. It can withstand with the forces which will be applied to it. It can endure the forces which will be exerted on it. And it is not over designed because if you over design a particular component or a particular part, it will not be able to work properly with the other components. Plus, it will increase the cost of the system, which is definitely not required. So the cost, size, weight, everything for a component or for a machinery has to be optimized on the basis of the input and the output forces that we are getting in the body. Now we are concerned with input and output and we are concerned with forces so we have to do the analysis of these forces. Now the force analysis can be done in two ways for two different types of the system. Right? There are, first I'll tell you the two ways. The two ways are the analytical and the graphical method. So in analytical method we use the algebraic equations to determine the unknown forces or the moments. This is a good method this takes less time but this does not help the students to visualize that what exactly is happening. On the other hand the another method which is the graphical method which makes use of the geometry or some representation of the machine or the body in which we make the free body diagrams and solve it gives better visualization of the system even though it's it's very time consuming and most of the time there are errors while drawing the diagrams so it is not a very much effective method but in this chapter we'll talk about the graphical force analysis so that we can visualize how exactly the system works now the next question is the type of force analysis now see this machine which i'm denoting by this rectangular block this is stable at the moment right so the force acting on the body, they are in stable position. So there is no unstability. This is the static force analysis. Static force analysis by static, we mean, we mean what? That the body is at rest. Or even if it's moving, it is continuously moving. There is no, there is no disturbance, right? In, so basically this static force analysis is applicable to mechanisms where changes in movement are very gradual or the mass of component is negligible. That means we do not talk about the inertia forces. The inertia component is not taken into consideration. For example, while lifting the cranes, the magnitude of inertia forces is very small compared to the externally applied load. So we do not bother about these inertia forces. So this is the static force analysis when the body is not moving or if it's moving, it is moving very gradually or slowly and the mass of the component is neglected. The second type of force analysis is the dynamic force analysis. Dynamic by name, it means that it has got the dynamic factors attached to it right so when you are talking about these inertia forces when the inertia comes into play 
when we are considered about when we are considerate about the mass of the component or the component is accelerating continuously that is the dynamic force analysis now why this is important let's assume this machine it is moving it is uh, it is accelerating at some uh, you know at some value continuously and if this acceleration produces imbalance in the system by imbalance we mean that it produces the vibration in the system noise in the system that is certainly not desirable so we need to do the analysis while designing so that during the motion or while running the machine gives the desired output without any undesirable vibrations or noise or any other factor right now these are the two terms which we will be using continuously which is the constraint forces and the applied forces so constraint forces basically they these forces they are in pair action reaction forces you're moving you're walking on the floor so action is your force and reaction is the friction applied by the ground so these forces they always exist in the action in the pairs right now because they are in the pairs and both the forces are equal and opposite to each other their net effect is zero if let's assume there is this body right it is applying a weight mg and there is this reaction because of this weight r and the magnitude of both the forces is same so if you talk about these forces in pair the value is zero but if i somehow isolate the system and i talk about only one single force then these forces of course they come into play and they help in force analysis the second type of forces are the applied forces which are the externally applied forces they may be through the physical contact they may be the physical force or the mechanical force some you are applying force or friction so they are what externally applied forces but contact is not always important they may be applied without any physical contact such as the electric force or the magnetic or the gravitational force now we come to the static equilibrium now we say a body is in static static means it is if it is in rest it will remain in rest if it is moving it will continue moving because it is in its state of balance equilibrium is what state of balance so whenever a body is completely balanced there are no losses and we assume there is no friction so if it is in rest it will remain in rest if it is moving it will keep on moving so the two conditions to be satisfied are the vector sum of all the forces acting on the body is zero now see when we talk about the vector forces let's assume this is a body right in a planar system if i say there are n number of forces acting on a body it is possible there are n number of forces acting but still the body is in static equilibrium why because the vector sum has to be zero so summation of f is zero so you take all the forces acting on the body and if their resultant is zero the body is in static equilibrium for example if there is a block someone is applying force f1 someone is applying force f2 the value of both the forces is same and opposite so summation of f is zero so this is the condition of static equilibrium here in the diagram you see there is a weighing machine so it is balanced this is static equilibrium because the vector sum of forces is zero the second condition that has to be satisfied is the vector sum of all the moments about any arbitrary point in the system should be zero if there is this moment okay let's take another diagram if because of forces there is some moment in clockwise direction in some um, counter clockwise direction and if the vector sum again is zero the, it is in static equilibrium so for planar systems the summation of force in x axis is zero summation of force in y axis is zero and summation of all the torques acting on the body in x x y plane or about the z axis is zero now dynamic equilibrium inertia forces are considered what is inertia it is the property by virtue of which a body resists change in its velocity and this is associated with accelerating masses so velocity is changing that means acceleration is there in the body here you see the 
example of a slider crank mechanism. So this part is always rotating, right? This crank is always rotating. So even though omega remains constant, velocity is changing because of the direction. So acceleration is constantly acting in this system. And the value and the equations for dynamic equilibrium are given by D. Allenbach's principle, which says that the inertial forces, which is I, is talking about the inertia. The forces due to inertia plus the summation of all the external forces acting on the body, it should be equal to zero. And the inertia, the couple because of the inertia and the externally applied torques, the summation should be equal to zero. So D. Allenbach's principle is nothing but an extension of the conditions of static equilibrium by taking into consideration the inertia components, right? Now, there's a small example just to make you understand why dynamic equilibrium is important. This blue car, it was moving with some velocity, some fi. It was its inertial velocity, right? Now, what happens? Some externally applied force f is there. So, if these forces, if they are not in equilibrium, what will happen? It will obviously lead to certain damages. The same is with the machines. When vibration is there, when the summation of forces or when the net force acting on the body is not zero, there will be vibration which is not at all desirable. Therefore, static and dynamic equilibrium conditions as per the requirement of the machinery are important to consider while designing the systems.